and let us all that we can to build a better future. Uh, Daniel, you have a story for the people. What's going on, buddy? Oh, right. Okay, yeah, we have more stories. Okay, so uh, I thought this was interesting. So uh, Joe Biden, I'm sure you've heard of him, uh, President of the United States, or at least masquerading as it will Kamala waits very desperately to step in his place with her no votes, is, uh, well, their situation's not working. And um, people that Joe Biden thought he had in the bag, as you know, he's, he's always putting like, you know, black people in a bag, like, I know you're going to vote for me. I'm just going to put you in here until I need you to vote for me again. Then you come out of the bag. Uh, well, they're upset at him because he's not delivered on the voting rights and they're being pushed back across the country and the Democrats, much like what the Dreamers are going, whatever, not my state, but yeah. we'll fundraise off it. Let's check out the video. So some voting rights advocates are apparently running out oh, of patience pause, pause with President Biden. Uh, Mika, uh, just whenever you need help, just blink three Times. We'll, we'll help, help you. We'll help you away from Joe. Blink twice if you're in trouble. Yeah. The Washington Post reports that at nearly weekly meetings with White House officials, supporters have expressed frustrations with the president's lack of aggression and focus on the issue, especially as Republican led states enact new voting laws. Reading from the Post report, quote, activists want Biden to provide a loud, clear voice against these moves from primetime speeches to regular denunciations of especially egregious actions. Beyond that, they say he should throw himself into passing voting rights legislation and more aggressively go after states that are politicizing their election systems. The Senate is again expected to take up voting rights legislation this week, but it will face another Republican filibuster. So some voting rights advocate. All right, let's pause this right here. You know, we covered this on the show too. Again, the hypocrisy of the Biden-Harris administration, especially when it comes down to voting rights or anything else that the Biden-Harris administration ran, in during, ran on during the 2020 presidential election cycle. They're not following through. This is something that we told anyone that was being browbeaten to vote Democrat. No, no, that's not an excuse to vote Republican. No, what this is, this should tell all of you that if you vote Democrat or Republican, know this, that the two-party system will make sure nothing fundamentally changes. Under Democratic and Republican presidential administrations, the rich have been getting richer and the working class have been getting screwed over. There's a social safety net to help out Americans that are struggling day in, day out. And the sad fact is, you would think, in theory, that Biden and Harris would do everything they can through executive orders, through their own charisma, try and rally the Senate and House and also use the bully puppet to actually inspire their base to actually get out there and start implementing these progressive policies or these promises that they ran on. But they're not following through. So, of course, their voting base is now starting to wake up, smell the coffee. They're looking at it and thinking, wait a minute. You're not doing anything that you ran on. You're not following through with anything. And there is a legitimate fear that Democratic voters or diehard vote blue no matter who people should have because there's a lot of political ammunition that could be used against the Democrats in the midterms. And let's face it, Trump looks like he's going to run again in the 2024 presidential election cycle. If he doesn't, I will be surprised. We yeah. will all be surprised. But this is a door opening for somebody like Trump or somebody worse than Trump to get into the Republican race. What is the solution to this? You cannot support the two-party system. You've got to look at third parties. You've got to look at building ballot initiatives, supporting ballot initiatives. And yes, dare I say it, activists and community organizers need to start stepping up and doing more of these continuous strikes. There must be a more call for, an ex for, exec for worker co-ops. If we don't start implementing these things now, we're screwed. And if we start waiting for Washington, D.C. or any presidential administration, and I don't care if it's Democrat or Republican, I'm sorry. If you voted for them, you will always be waiting outside. And here's the other thing about everything we're dealing with is that it's like, you know what's a really big deal to the Democratic Party that would affect like a lot of seats being moved? Uh, well, it's going to be whether or not people can vote and the abysmal state of voting here in America from thousands of angles. The truth is in 2022... The Republicans are going to take over at least one, but probably both, uh, the House and the Senate. And then we're going to have a situation, just like we did when Clinton was president, where they're going to start passing all sorts of terrible legislation, and Biden's going to go, I guess this is fine. And Manchin's going to sign it as well. 
Because remember, it's like, it's, I love how they're always like, hey man, you don't want to push Manchin out of the party into the Republicans. Like, oh yes, so the exact same thing can happen, but we can pretend, we can stop pretending that he's an ally. Um, we know how this is going to play out. I think all of us watching know how this is going to work out. We know that the Democrats are going to lose their majorities, and then they're going to capitulate, which is what they do best. And we're going to sit here as the people going, we told you this was going to happen. And what are they going to do? They're going to blame you. Yeah. Now, one other thing, too. When it comes down to the policies that the Biden-Harris administration are supposed to follow through on, surprisingly, they're still keeping a lot of Trump's policies. Again, if you voted for the Biden-Harris administration, I'd be angry, too, because they haven't changed anything. But then again, Biden has followed through with his campaign promise. Nothing will fundamentally change. Yeah, and it's like, I, I it's like I, to, to the blue no matter who people that would have been happy if Hillary gotten elected never would have gotten involved with politics, but only got involved with politics because Trump got elected. This is your responsibility. You were the group of people that swung the boat. So if there's anyone at all who should take some amount of responsibility. It's not the people that have been consistent for years about how the system works and pointing out its flaws and pre accurately predicting how we were going to get screwed over. It's the other people that thought, for whatever reason, that there was really a difference between the two parties to begin with. And, it, and it, the reality is, it's like we've talked about, I made the, oh, it's like a diabetes, it's like this. Here's what the two parties are like. It's a toxic relationship between two people and talking together and having that relationship together makes them even worse than they would be apart. If it was just the Republican Party, that was like, it was just a Republican Party and everything, they would automatically, just because of the way that power is constituently put out, they would, they would split again. They could not exist on their own. They only can exist, you know, we're just the kids of drunk alcoholics, apparently. Yeah.